Hey there, I'm Kate and this is Monocat. And today we have a special guest here to discuss the topic of this video. How's it going guys? It's Andrew from Jimmy Chang's videos, also known as the Scooter Guru. And we are going to talk about what are the differences between an EUC and e-scooter, so you can figure out for yourself what's the better fit for you. So, let's get this started. And today we are going to compare EOCs and e-scooters, since they have as PEVs very similar use cases, ranging from a last mile solution to mid-range commutes and free time riding, but on the other side are fundamentally different when it comes to ride feeling and practicality. And I've been riding EOCs quite a lot, but have a limited knowledge when it comes to e-scooters, but luckily we have Andrew here who can help me out with that. Thanks for the introduction, Kate. Luckily for me, I've been blessed over the past few years to have the opportunity to test and review over 50 different scooters. And um, they're definitely an awesome experience for last mile solutions and also for fun. I'd love to share with you guys what I think about them and what I think definitely shines about choosing an e-scooter over an EUC. And since we are two people today, it's gonna be less of a scripted essay like normally and more of a streamlined podcast where we can discuss our thoughts on each topic. First, we are going to talk about the learning curves, then the legality, after that the cost to performance ratio, safety, the behavior on different surfaces, features, service ability, the amount of exercise, and last but not least, the right feeling. So the first topic is about the learning curve of each of those PEVs. And for me personally, I think it's much easier to just hop on a scooter than riding an EUC since you don't have to actively balance it by yourself. Oh, absolutely. For me, when I first got a scooter, I was able to just go right onto it. Um, well, actually an e-scooter, just because I've had experience on a manual scooter growing up, I was able to jump right onto it, um, take off and is pretty simple for me to learn. Where an EUC, it was very painful, took me lots of cuss words and lots of hurting <laughs> of ankles, and took me about six weeks to actually pick up on it and, and trust the device. But really, I think um, I have seen people be able to learn how to ride an EUC immediately, but they have former skill sets in like skiing or ice skating, something with quite a bit of balance. Yeah, for me, I think I'm, I fall into the second category since I had a lot of experience in ice skating and rollerblading before. And for me, I think I got some sense of riding on the first day and after one week I could ride quite comfortably, but I still needed help to get on and off the EUC. Absolutely. And that was my biggest trouble was getting on and off an EUC. Um, for the first month, it was very painful. I had to lean on somebody and um, really got lucky one day where Jimmy let me borrow his EUC for the day. I was using a pull to start out and I was going fine. And then I went to an area where there was no pulls within sight. So I just had to jump on and trust it. And that was my first time getting on an EUC and learning how to jump on one. That sounds like you've just been thrown into the cold water there. Exactly. I was getting quite good at riding, but the starting was still quite troublesome. But for a video for Mr. Wrong Way, um, we wanted to show oh, how to ride an EUC and I just had to learn it right for this video in the moment of recording. Awesome. Sounds like an amazing experience and he's been an amazing teacher for me on this trip, so I can see him teaching you very quickly. Yes, it works very well riding together with him. That's amazing. So for this, I would say it's like definitely easier if you want to have a quick and comfy experience, definitely to choose a scooter. Yeah, a scooter is very natural. I think a lot of people have ridden a manual scooter growing up, um, especially millennials, a little bit older age group, maybe not so much, but anybody who's 40 or under has probably ridden a manual scooter. Not probably, but a lot of people have ridden a manual scooter, whereas an EUC is a completely different unnatural feeling and it has a huge learning curve at first. Yes, I can only agree to that. Mm -hmm. 
And with the next point, we will talk about legality. And for me, the experiences I have are mostly based on Europe, obviously. And I could get quite a good insight on different countries since we traveled around Europe quite a bit on EOC. I will just start right there because I think the general concept is that in most countries, with exception of the Netherlands, for example, you can ride a scooter or at least like a slower scooter that you can also rent somewhere nearly everywhere. And this is due to a European law actually, which get referenced quite often. But since they don't include self-balancing vehicles in this law, all countries can just decide for themselves what they will do with EUCs, which can be for the better or the worse. But how is it in the US? Yes, in the US, it's kind of open in the air right now. Scooters are typically legal in most places, but they are putting more regulations on them due to them being in major metropolitan cities with the rentals and um, people abusing that. So we are going to see some regulations sooner than later. And with EUCs, I feel like they're an open door right now. It's, and what I mean by open door is it's so abnormal to see an EUC rider that a lot of regulation hasn't come down on them where there's a lot more scooter riders on the road and a lot more scooter riders doing poor things for the public in PEBs. There are poor things um, in the public's eye of riding fast near pedestrians and a lot of people understand them so they want to regulate them. Where in EUC, most people have no idea what they're even looking at so it's hard for them to even regulate them without even knowing what they are. Yes, I think also this bad public view on scooters comes a lot from the rental ones, at least here in Europe. Since when they first started out, like in Germany, for example, people also would use them in drunk or with multiple people, which led to many accidents. And I think that's why more people are against it and want also to regulate it further. But as you said, the EOCs are quite a niche group at this point. And even most policemen don't exactly know what's going on. And here in Poland, they mostly also don't care. So there you got just got to choose also in your country what's happening there and have to look at that. Because in the Netherlands, for example, everything is sort of illegal. Yes, exactly. We're, see where we're at in Colorado, there's not much regulation there. I've never been pulled over on, um, well, I've actually been pulled over on a scooter but they were told me to not be on the road and told me to get on the paths, which were only at 15 mile speed limits, even though I was going 35 miles per hour on the road. So it was really interesting that I was pulled over on the road and asked to be onto the sidewalks where the speed limits are much lower. But overall, I've had really good experiences on scooters or EUCs in the US, never been pulled over um, or never given a ticket. And um, I think for the most part, police officers speak with EUC riders and they're more just surprised that we're able to go so fast on only one wheel. So instead of actually stopping us to give us a ticket, they're stopping us to ask questions about what we're using. Yes, I also had that quite often, not with policemen in particular, but just from other people walking around. They were always very curious about EUCs while most of them know e-scooters already. So I think if it's a bit an unsure thing in your country um, about your legality, usually on the EOC you're more on a like positive side because you're just not known and new. Where on a scooter, if it's not legal or in a gray zone, they might be more being a bit negative towards e-scooters. Exactly. And next up we have cost to performance ratio. And here we're just going to look at what are normal prices you have to expect to pay, the range you can get, speed, and also the weight you have to carry around if something breaks down. So for the price, I would say at EUCs you can get something, not the very small ones, but something you can actually ride around a bit more. Comes up from 1000, 1500 euros up to very pricey ones like the Sherman with 3000 euros. Now with the new and even bigger and better EUCs that are just coming out now, we might have to expect prices up to 4,000 euros, but I think it's still in, in quite a good range and you can get something for any price point right now. Absolutely, and same thing with scooters. Scooters and come in different price ranges and speaking in, in dollars, which is pretty similar to, to euros right now, you're seeing scooters as low as 300 to $500 
not a lot of range, not a lot of power, um, definitely more of a last mile solution. So I think definitely you can find a last mile solution cheaper on the scooter side. Whereas when you go to the higher powered scooters versus EUCs, cost per performance ratio is much better on EUCs and mainly the battery size. So what I've noticed a lot is the, the probably the biggest battery that we've seen on scooters is about 60 volts by 50 amp hours, so about 3000 watt hours. And that would correlate to something similar to the Sherman. So I guess in, in that situation, cost per performance ratio for the battery in that would be about the same, but you wouldn't get nearly the range you would on an EUC for that many watt hours. How much would be the price of the scooter you referenced? Um, price of the scooter I referenced about um, 2,700 euros. That's also very, very close to the Sherman with 3,200 euros. Yep, exactly. So if we're comparing Sherman versus that scooter, which would be like the Yumi X7, which features a 60 volt by 50 amp hour battery, so 3,000 watt hours, you're looking at having about the same, same cost to performance ratio when it comes to battery size. But when you're just talking about sheer range of how long that scooter will go fast versus how long the EUC will go fast. An EUC will have much better range for that situation. And let me back up a little bit because I'm sure that can be a little confusing what I just said. What I mean by that is we just did a 65 kilometer ride on the Sherman. We had about 43% left on the battery. Whereas if I did a 63 kilometer ride on that Yumi X7, I would have maybe 10% left of the battery or maybe use the whole battery for how fast we were riding. So you're gonna get similar battery size, but you're never gonna get the same range, which is surprising to me because I would always think that something with two wheels and not having to self-balance would get better range, but I've noticed that EUCs get much better range for their battery output. I noticed the same thing that usually the, the scooters, at least uh, we saw on the wrong way channel, tend to have also a bit of a, like a lower range profile. And with EUCs, you can, even with the very big ones, of course, you can go up to 200 kilometers. And for the Sherman, I think I would be able to get like 150 out of it. So I think that in EUCs, the, the range is just a very good part of it. Yes, 100%. And kind of speaking on that, it's really interesting because you can go faster as well, where I know that when you say the 200 kilometers, you're speaking about like the Monster Pro that yes. Adam has done a range test on. And Adam was telling me that even with 0% battery, he was still going 40, 50 kilometers an hour with no beeping or no throttling. Whereas if on a scooter you're at 0% battery capacity, you're maybe going at 25% of the speed. So if it can go up to 60 kilometers an hour, you'd only be going 15 kilometers an hour at 0%. So yes, there's a, a huge gap which I still haven't been able to figure out why something that doesn't have to self-balance is ending up getting or less range than an EUC that has to self-balance and also go up to high speeds. I think this also might have to do a bit uh, with the weight because scooters, at least in my experience, tend to weight also quite a bit for their battery size, what they have, and they have the two wheels, they need to, to have them spinning all the time, so... Yeah, it's you would think so on that. But like the Monster Pro weighs um, 99 pounds, I believe. It's and 45 kilograms. Yeah, so 45 we... kilograms. So even like the 99 or 101 pounds is what it correlates to. Mm -hmm. And um, the Yumi X7 weighs like 115 pounds. So not much of a huge difference in weight. And they have about um, similar, or one has 3000 watt hour batteries and the other one has 3600 watt hour batteries, the Monster Pro. Yes. So yeah, def definitely, I haven't figured that out yet. I'm sure there's some experts that are gonna watch this video and then comment, comment below. And that's highly encouraged also. Yes, make sure to comment and like this video. Exactly. <laughs> And with the weight general, I think also if you want to have like something smaller, especially with the EUC, there's quite a lot of EUC options like the Kingsong 40D or 16X or Godway Tesla V2 or V3 that are currently out right now, which are quite light for the range they can achieve and the speeds they can achieve. With the Tesla V3, for example, it weighs only 24 kilograms, which I can still lift, which is a great achievement for me. And 
I think I can probably go up to 100 kilometers with it and it can reach a speed of 50 kilometers, which is the upper end, which you should slow down. Oh, absolutely. And when you talk about the weight to performance ratio, EUCs all day long um, end up beating scooters every single time in that in that category. There's definitely some, some scooters that can go pretty far range. Like the E-Move Cruiser, I believe, weighs like 52 pounds. And that scooter can do ranges of like 43 miles, so close to 70 kilometers. So that's great. But just like you said, that's still heavier than the Tesla and you can get more range out of the Tesla. Yes. So, yeah. EUCs win in that category for sure. I think with all these price, range, speed, and weight, the EUCs win in almost every single category except for maybe speed. Yeah, maybe with the speed. And I think it's also more difficult to achieve high speeds on the EUC because you have to be a very good and focused rider for that. Yeah, you, you definitely are putting yourself in much more danger to, to do a high speed run on an EUC than you are with a scooter because a scooter... If it does go dead, typically we'll just die and you'll roll to a stop. Um, however, the ultimate negative thing that could happen is where you're going really fast. The front motor is so hot that it somehow locks up and then sends you launching. So that's always one thing that's in the back of my head, doing high speed runs on scooters. So I normally try to do it when the scooter's as cold as possible rather than doing it after running it for hours in hot, hot heat. And since we're already talking about it, our next point is safety. Especially now, since we're already talking about it, uh, safety on the PEV is also a very important topic, I think. Since I often see and hear about the comments that people are scared of cutoffs on the EUC, which, if it occurs, is a very scary thing to cut off on the EUC. But in my experience, I never experienced the cutoff, and the only cutoffs I have seen or noticed is either in rain, heavy rain, so if you have a not waterproofed EUC, either because it didn't come waterproofed out of factory or you didn't got it waterproofed, um, then this can happen. Or if you ride, ride the beeps or go faster than the beeps, so you go way faster than the wheel was designed to, and it, with the beeps it tells you to stop riding that speed essentially. So those are the only times I, I saw cutouts happening. Yeah, and I, I've typically I've never witnessed a cutout on a scooter. So I'd say that I would think that scooters are safer than EUCs, but there's also a catch, okay? So what I mean by that is overall, scooters have two wheels. You're not having to depend on self-balancing. If something does go bad, it normally just comes rolling to a stop. However, I feel like there is definitely more accidents on scooters than EUCs, and this is why. A lot of people are pretty careless when it comes to scooters. They don't wear a lot of safety gear. They think it's no big deal. They end up sliding out. They end up crashing because of incorrect braking, of using the front brakes too much, and you go launching over the handlebars. Or you're taking turns too sharp and your second wheel slides out from your, from your scooter. So lots of different accidents can occur on a scooter. And I think it's due to lack of safety gear as well. Most people just adherently think that scooters are, are a lot more safe, so they don't need as much safety gear. So they might just go with a helmet, they don't have knee guards, they don't have elbow pads. They believe a helmet is just fine, which a helmet is fine most of the time, but you have no idea what can happen around the corner. You don't have any idea if um, there's any malfunctions. You just never know when you're gonna hit a really big pothole that's gonna pop your tire. So lots of accidents happen on scooters, and I would say that scooter accidents are probably 10 to one that on an EUC. Yes, and I think also the lack of safety gear on, on scooters, I've also seen that quite often, because the typical thing you see is like the fully geared up EUC rider, maybe do an amount where it's a bit excessive, and then the more casually clothed scooter rider. And I think that also comes from all those rental scooters because they're so easily available, just like rental bikes, that people think if it's just easily available, I can take it any time that they don't need any gear to ride it, or at least for those low speeds. I agree with you 100%. And um, for me, just so you guys know, I've had way more accidents on a scooter than I've had on an EUC. Um, I've had my ego bruise quite a bit on an EUC when I was first learning it, and I've had my ankles get pretty jacked up, 
but overall I've had a pretty good experience on EUCs, whereas in scooters I've crashed them a few times, they've let me pivot the, the handle or the steering 90%, which locks up the steering column as well. So there's definitely a lot of safety issues that come with scooters that um, a lot of people are un unaware about. I had more accidents on EUCs, but I mainly ride EUCs. I very seldomly ride scooters. In the last year, I probably rode an a e-scooter only once uh, for one of the latest videos from Adam from Wrong Way for the new scooters. And there we had a sticky throttle and it kept on accelerating and I kind of fell off it and it hit me against the ankle. Nothing serious happened, but for the amount of scooters I ride, uh, quite noticeable the amount of, of danger you could say I put myself into. Almost, definitely. Also, I think most of the accidents happen is due to like different surfaces and that's also our next point. Um, and we start with off-road because off-road is like the next usual thing you have after the normal great smooth surface you ideally want to ride on. But also a lot of people like going off-road, so I think that's also a very interesting comparison to make how it goes there. Yeah, scooters are a blast off-roading. They're a ton of fun and it's really easy to just go right to off-roading when you first start riding scooters if you have any experience in dirt biking or motocross and then manual scooting as well. Whereas at EUC, for me, the first time, if you asked me if I wanted to go off-road in the first couple months, I would tell you no, I didn't want to do it. Um, it just didn't seem fun to me because I was more just trying to survive on the EUC. Yes, I, I had a very similar experience. Just, just recently, like a couple of months ago, I started enjoying going off-road on the EUC. Before, if people would mention, oh, let's go off-road, I was always a bit hesitant. Um, especially since you have to balance the one wheel you're standing on constantly, I think it's more of a challenge also. With suspension, it's definitely easier to do if you have a suspension wheel, but most of the current wheels that are out there don't have suspension also. Yeah, and honestly, one of my favorite off-roading wheels right now is the Monster Pro with an off-roading tire. And um, I'm lucky to be blessed with amazing people in my life, like Seth Johnson from E-Red Life. He, um, has really opened my eyes to EUCs. This trip with Adam has been awesome. I've taken the wrong way school of learning EUCs and dropping stairs. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, I've, I've been lucky to have people in my life that want to show to me that EUCs are blast off-roading. So now, yes, I love to go off-roading. I was going off-road on one of these trails 40 miles per hour the other day and it felt great because of the knobby tire. And I love it on an EUC if you know that it has high torque. Yeah, scooters or EUCs, they're both a blast, but a scooter you can jump right into off-roading almost immediately if you have some experience. Or an EUC, it definitely takes a little bit of a learning curve. Yes, and also I think most of the bigger scooters already have like some dampness or some sort of suspension. So it will also be a bit easier to take out the blows from the off-road. 100%. But where EUCs excel way over scooters in the off-roading category is their torque to climb high pitches. Um, an EUC pound for pound can climb up steep terrain much better than a scooter and it still doesn't make any sense to me that something that has to self-balance you in the same voltage will have better power going uphill than a scooter that has two tires, doesn't have to balance and has exact same voltage system you'll still have a, a way better time on an EUC trying to climb a 20 degree or higher. I think this also comes from how you stand on, on each of the PEVs, since usually on a scooter a handlebar would like stop your leaning forwards at some point because you can't lean more forwards. But on an EUC you can always just lean more in the worst case. And if I had trouble going up an incline, for example, I would just lean as much forward as I could and I always made it so far. Awesome. That's a good tip. I'll need to make sure I put that in my guidebook to EUCs. <laughs> Guide to EUC writing from Andrew. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, from, from Monocat. From both of us. Yeah. So, yeah, talking about cobblestone, I was really surprised with this test the other day 
we went to the cobblestone area and I thought hands down a scooter would be so much better because the one scooter we were trying was the Kingsong N11 um, Cheetah which has dual suspension um, rubber cartridges and I thought for sure this was going to be better on cobblestone but sure enough we found out that an EUC with smooth tires or off-road tires was still better than a scooter with off-road tires. One thing that was really interesting to us was I thought, oh, maybe the scooter was just louder and more um, uncomfortable on the cobblestone because there was off-road tires. So I tried the V12 at first, which had more of a street hybrid tire. And then I tried the um, EXN High Torque, which has a CST knobby tire. And both of them still felt much better on the cobblestone than the scooter with suspension. Yes, I, I can definitely agree to that. And in the beginning, I was always a bit hesitant to go on cobblestone because I was afraid that the EUC just wouldn't perform as well there. So I always got the biggest wheel that was available right now. And if, you, if you're scared of that, taking a bigger wheel in the beginning is definitely a good choice because it will just dampen everything down a bit. And now for the test that we did, I was on the V12 and I had no troubles whatsoever. It was obviously noticeable but it wasn't bad in any way and I felt quite comfortable going for a longer period of time. Yeah, it looked like you were comfortable. And we did the ah uh, test and... Yes. <laughs> yes. Kate sounded much better than my ah uh, that you'll hear. <laughs> yes, we, we will show that in a second. Yes. Oh yeah, my friend's getting jostled. It's vibrating so much. Even with suspension, it's still like nah, crazy. I think it's worse than the V12. Uh, 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 <laughs> now you're uh, uh, <laughs> Very scientific. And then, yeah, talking about stairs, you can write down stairs with a scooter but it's terrible for the scooter. It damages them. They're really not designed for it because essentially when you're holding on to a handlebar, you're holding on a really big lever and um, you find that a lot of stems end up breaking quite a bit due to you going downstairs or going off jumps. So you can go downstairs, just you're not really supposed to go downstairs on scooters. Yes, also I think obviously in comparison to EUC, since they have only one tire, it might happen that you hit one of the stairs, I could imagine, with the board. Absolutely. It just depends on the type of scooter. There is plenty of scooters that have bigger clearance, like the Yumi X7 has 13-inch tires, so I did go downstairs on that. But it was still jostling me around. It was still bumping me around. Um, you can look at this clip from Jimmy Chang's video. You can throw that in here of this, of me going downstairs on a scooter but you'll see I'm bouncing around, my feet are barely staying on, on the platform. And then you can go downstairs on an EUC, remain perfectly fine, you have plenty of power, and you're not getting jostled all around. And plenty of fun. <laughs> plenty of fun, yes. We, As you can see here, we, Kate actually does her first stair set, which is very awesome. The first and big stair set. Before I did like two or three stairs, maybe. Usually when they, they caught me in surprise, I was like, just going my way and then whoop, there's stairs and then just rather go for it than break right in front of the stairs. But that's also the next thing for stairs on EUC. As long as you have a decently sized EUC, like 14, 16 inch even, um, you can tackle most stairs. The only thing you have to watch out is if you have not that high pedal clearance. Because on the Tesla V2, it could happen to you that you clip your pedals on the side or something. But as you see here on the 16 inch V12, I had a blast going down the stairs. The only thing you need is speed. Usually the bit higher the better. If you have too much speed, you will just fly off it, but rather a bit more speed than less speed. Yeah, and then as you can see from our video, Adam can actually go up and down stairs with ease. So that's the difference is on a scooter, there's no way I'm going up the stairs. I may go down the stairs, but it's not really designed for it. But on um, EUC, you can go up and down it. And then when you're talking about the portability of going up and down the stairs with a scooter versus an EUC, whether you walk it up or whether you carry it up, whether you push it up or ride it up, 
it's still way faster than having to break down a scooter and carry it and lug it up and down stairs. Um, Adam was able to go up and down the stairs in four times by the time I was able to go up the stairs, assemble my scooter, deassemble my scooters and go down the stairs. Yeah, there's definitely quite a difference. So if, for example, your commute or your typical routes for riding have some stairs in them, it will probably be way easier to tackle them on the EUC than on a scooter. I agree with that 100%. And next up, the, the smaller cousin of the stairs uh, are the curbs. And I would say they are fairly easy on both vehicles, from what I've seen and know, to tackle them. For me, I think you do like a very great jump on them, which I wouldn't be able to perform. So I don't know how experienced you have to be to do it. But the few times I was riding a scooter, like smaller curbs going up and down wasn't big of an issue for me. Yeah, it's it takes a little bit of practice. I think their curbs are a lot less imitating on a scooter than they are on an EUC. Mm. Um, I really did not like to go up or down curves on an EUC my first like few months of riding them. Um, but it's just more that I was scared. Now I'm perfectly fine going up and down them. And I'd say they're about equal to me of, of what's easier going up and down curbs. They're both pretty simple on, on a scooter or EUC. Um, and they're both just, it just depends. If you're on a really nice scooter versus a really nice EUC, both of them are easy. If you're on a really small EUC or a small scooter, they're both going to be hard as well, the curbs. They're not going to be as easy. Yes, and for me personally, I think I have to be always like mentally aware of the curb when I'm riding on EUC, so I'll try to push it up a bit so it goes easier. If you want to have bigger curbs to clear, then it will be important that you have higher tire pressure, otherwise you might bend or even crack your rims. A hundred percent. And you can crack rims on, on scooters as well. I've seen quite a few from people hitting potholes. And I'd say it's about equal. Um, the key is, is making sure you fill up your tire pressure on either an EUC or a scooter. But I think you can actually damage rims easier on a scooter because it's just a smaller tire. Mm, yes, that makes a lot of sense. Now that we have that covered, we can talk about more smaller features that you have on each of the EUC and PUV or that you don't have, like a handlebar, for example. Yeah, handlebars on scooters are nice because you have something to attach a light to, you have bells attached to it, you have a cockpit that you can control. And they weren't really on old EUCs, but EUCs are starting to make a cockpit on the top of them that you can kind of adjust while you're riding. But for the most part, you need an app for most EUCs to adjust things. And scooters, most of the adjustability comes on the handlebar. So that's always nice. However, or just like we just said, it's called a handlebar and it takes up your hands to use it. So that is one huge thing that I love about EUCs. You have the ability to be hands-free. You can eat, talk on the phone. And the best part, which we're doing a lot of times on the EUCs, is we're filming and it's the ultimate gimbal experience. So you have a very smooth transition when you're filming from an EUC. Um, on a scooter, you're either really dangerously riding one-handed and using a selfie stick if you're trying to record, or you have to use like a 360 camera or a chest camera. So you only get one angle, it's not the best, and 100% I love the fact that I can be hands-free on an EUC. Yes, I think this is also like a very clear point. In the beginning, that was my reason that I felt safer on a scooter when I was just trying out, because it also felt very familiar to me. It just feels safe to hold on to the device with your hands that you're riding. Also, if you get a phone mount or you have the screen of the, the scooter, you don't have to look down to see your speed or where you want to go. But also you can easily take your phone away if you don't want to see it and just put it away on the EUC because you have to, your hands free to do so or to grab some drinks or something. So now that I'm a bit more experienced rider and trust that I can do something with my hands in the meantime during riding, it's definitely a great advantage to have. 100% agree with you on that. And then speaking about lights on these things, lights on scooters are notoriously known for being poor. Um, I'm not a big fan of most scooter lights. There's only a few scooters that I like the lights on it and feel like they're safe for night riding. And that would be like the Cabo Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, Wolf King, Curse Panther, some Yumi scooters. 
but for the most part, 95% of them are what Adam would say is pathetic um, or <laughs> pathetic. So yes, I, I, I do find lots of lights are pathetic on there on most e-scooters. And most of them on EUCs, they're kind of a mix. I find some really good lights on EUCs and I find some really terrible lights on EUCs. Oh, and I forgot to add one nice one to add on to it was the Cheetah N11 that has a really awesome light as well. Yes. Also, the rather cheap new scooters Adam was testing recently had a very nice light. They also wouldn't blind people aggressively, which is also often a feature I have the feeling in EOCs that have a bit of a better light is they tend to blind people either like pedestrians or other riders or somebody else upcoming quite often that you see that they are holding their hands in front of their face. Especially the Sherman, for example, has a very aggressive light. Yes. So I'd say... EUCs get the plus on the lights. Yes, but the only downside often I have with EUCs with light is the real light. Because as an extreme case, for example, on the Tesla V2, there is no real light. So you have to mount something by yourself. Or on the V12, for example, the real light is very weak and not very visible, sadly. Oh, yes. And that's the same thing with scooters. The okay. rear tail lights tend to be pathetic as adam would say and so agree that unfortunately lights on pevs need to step it up um, on both eucs and scooters i think so too and then talk about kickstands you know scooters definitely beat eucs on the kickstand game for most of them we are starting to see kickstands starting to get implemented on some other eucs like the inmotion v12 but for now Scooters are, are much better because most of them do have kickstands, which makes it really nice. Well, I wouldn't say most of them, almost all of them do. Yes, because with EUC, you often just lean it next to a bench or a wall or something, but with a scooter, it's way more difficult. So I think it is necessary really to have a kickstand on a scooter. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to park anywhere. But if you don't have a bench or wall or anything around you because you're on a field or next to a street, then it's sometimes quite troublesome because you always have to lay the EUC down, which is not the best idea to do. The V11, it was, I think, one of the first ones to have a kickstand, which was okay. It was okay, not, not the best as I've heard, but the kickstand on the V12 is very solid. You can just easily put your EUC down wherever you go, basically, and it's a very solid piece. Also, you can get attachable kickstands from most EUCs, just from a third-party provider, but they range in quality and looks department, so there you have to definitely do some searching. 100%. They're not easy to find kickstands for EUCs. And speaking about um, upgrades of those, let's talk about bells. Bells and horns, we do find a lot of them are on scooters. Some scooters have really loud horns, some of them have really soft bells, but overall I'm glad that there is some type of warning device to warn pedestrians. I would prefer a bell slash horn combo. Um, bells for pedestrians and horns for other vehicles like cars, but you don't see a lot of bells or horns on EUCs quite yet. Um, I do know there is some EUCs that offer some type of whistle or bell type of noise or horn noise. Yeah. I believe the V12 does. But you have to access them in the app mostly. And I don't think in the situation where you would need a bell or a horn, you don't have the time to get out your phone and press on the little bell icon. So I think this is definitely a part where there needs to be some additions made. What I sometimes do is that I get like just a regular bell for a bicycle and have it on my fingers and use it like that. But it's also another piece I have to put on, so I quite often forget it. So it's also not a perfect solution. Yeah, it's never fun when you have to have 10 things you have to remember when running out the door. So thus, we will definitely give to scooters where it's just built onto the handlebars and you can just pull out the scooter and be prepared to, to ride with having a light, kickstand and bell. Exactly. Um, and speaking about that, um, one other positive from scooters is most of them do have suspension. You do find some other scooters like the 9Bot Max that does not have suspension, but for the most part, 90% of scooters have some type of suspension, where 95% of EUCs do not have suspension. I can only agree with that, and this is also, I think, 
from my riding experience, I only tried a couple of suspension wheels, mostly the S18. For me, it's always nice to have like a bit of extra suspension, but since you're only on one wheel and most of them also have a pretty big diameter, you don't need that much suspension if you can handle it with your knees. And for me, I never had that big of a problem with it. I think it's not a necessary thing to have. It's more of a nice thing to have on an EUC. If you have it, it definitely improves the ride feeling of it. And now there are also more EUCs coming out with suspension, but this also increases obviously the price and the possibility of something to break. Yes, I agree with that. The more things you add to something, the more it can break. Same thing with scooters. Suspensions break all the time. The coil scooters you find on a lot of scooters like the Zero 10X, the Polo Pro, the Turbo Wheel Lightning, also like on the new V-sets. It's a coil suspension. They break really easy and they should be better anyways to begin with. So scooters definitely get the plus on suspension, but it doesn't mean it's going to be more comfortable, um, just like we saw with the cobblestone. Exactly. It's, uh, I find the suspension is nice, but the Monster Pro is probably more comfortable than 90% of the scooters out there, and that has zero suspension. And that's just because the tire is so big. It's a 24 inch tire versus 11, 12, or even the biggest scooter tire I've seen, a 13 inch tire. You're gonna get much better of a feeling riding a Monster Pro, which has a 26 inch tire with zero suspension. And talking about all the braking parts, the next thing is serviceability. From my experience on EUC, if you don't have extreme issue like bearings issues that something broke or you've been riding it in excessive rain even though the EUC doesn't come waterproofed out of the factory, where if you are in a rainy area you should definitely look out for the in-motion EUCs since they have warranty for their waterproofing. Even changing tires you have to do after 3,000 or even sometimes 6,000 kilometers or even sometimes more. So I think there's not that often something happening that you have to service actually. Yeah, EUCs to me are, you're gonna have to service them a lot less than a scooter. A scooter is, they're not as high quality control. And what I mean by that is most scooters are not using Loctite on their bolts. So you'll have to tighten bolts pretty often on scooters. You're gonna go through tires more often because they're typically 10 to 13 inch tires that fill the road more. So if you do a thousand kilometers on a, a 13 inch tire versus a thousand um, kilometers you're on an 18 inch tire, you're gonna go through a lot more treading because the tire is hitting the ground more on a thousand kilometers when you're riding a smaller tire diameter. So scooters have to be changed more often. Scooters have more parts to break. You have suspension, low voltage, wiring that breaks on them, you have stems that break on them, you have... Um, brakes? Oh yeah, brake pads. Mm. Brake, that's a very good one, Monocat. Um, brake pads, you're gonna go through a ton of them on scooters if you're using it as a daily driver, where EUCs typically don't have to have brakes replaced at all. I think more than anything, you might have to replace a motor before you have to replace a brake on, a, on an EUC, which I'm not even sure how that works. We needed to bring Adam in on that subject. I mean, they have the regenerative braking, so there is no real brake pads or anything happening in the EUC. So the the only thing from what I know could be faulty is like the software, if there's like something breaking or the wiring. Sometimes we had the issue that something was rattling inside my Tesla V2 that was mostly loose screws. But besides from that, even though the Tesla V2, for example, is a Godway wheel, I was riding it actually in rain and in snow, and I never got any troubles with that. Oh, nice. Yeah, Gotway has a little bit less quality control on things. We just opened that EXN high torque and found that a lot of the bolts that should have been locked tight were not. But when you're looking at King Song and In Motion, they have really high standards of quality control. They're on the more conservative side, and they absolutely use Loctite versus where most scooter manufacturers don't use Loctite. Cabo is one of those people, and um, they're notorious for not using Loctite and bolts coming loose. The other thing Cabo is notorious for is using really cheap bolts. So I find that more people have scooters that are not working versus more EUC owners having EUCs not working. So to me, that means that the serviceability, you're gonna have to do it a lot more on scooters versus EUCs just because they're a lot less dependable. Yes, but I think then on the other side, the downside is 
if your EOC should break, there is way less availability of repair shop, for example, because some things you can't or you don't want to do by yourself and finding somebody to repair an EOC might be more difficult than finding somebody who can repair a scooter since they're just more accessible and there are way more of them. You bring up a very great point there, Kate. It's really interesting because scooters and EUCs are very similar. Essentially, it's a controller controlling a motor with tire around it, a power button, low voltage cabling to a light or a speaker, or in scooters, a horn. And you're going to find way more places that will repair a scooter versus places that will repair an EUC. And so, yeah, it's one of those things that if you're not very handy and you don't want to have to pay for shipping costs and you'd rather fix your PEV locally, you might want to do an electric scooter for that reason, because it's just going to be a lot harder to find a, someone who can work on an EUC. Exactly. Here in, in Warsaw, when something breaks on an EUC from Adam, for example, he has to take a half day trip a bit outside of the city where there is a, our local, so-called local EUC repair guy. But for scooters, there are multiple shops inside the city center also where you can just go and they will work on your scooter right away or in a couple of days. Yeah, I've noticed that too in the States. And the next point is going to be the amount of exercise you can get on riding on your PEV. What I noticed in my personal experience that for me being on a scooter, even though it was fun, it always felt like very stationary and at some point a bit boring because I was just in the same position all the time. This might also obviously can get better if you ride more and become a more experienced rider. But being on the EOC, since you have to do a constant balancing of the wheel basically, uh, you can definitely feel your core muscles and your leg muscles on the next day. And since you have a lot of free motion, you can do a lot also with your arms and just ride around very agile. I think it's also a good point to have at least some exercise in it. Oh, most definitely. And you bring up a very good point because my wife hates electric scooters sometimes because she says, I just want to get some exercise. Whereas in EUC, you were 100% getting some exercise. Um, Seth Johnson from E-Ride Life, he lost 50 pounds getting into PEVs. He started out as a one-wheel um, rider and then moved into EUCs and has lost over 50 pounds over the past 18 months. So he's a true testament to what an EUC can do, where a lot of people think, oh, you're cheating, you know, you're not actually working. No, you're working a lot on an EUC. You definitely will work on a scooter, but because um, you're standing up, but ultimately, you're not really working a lot of physical work. You're just more getting tired because for me, I'm going to take it off road for 10 miles and just the beating of the path, the suspension, up and down motion. I'm going to feel sore, but it's nothing like what I feel sore from riding an EUC for long periods of time. Yes, the only soreness I felt ever on the EUC is on my feet because especially in the beginning you will feel some soreness in your feet because it, usually most of the pedals are at least slightly angled which is a bit of an unnatural position for your feet to be in so that you can feel for sure and the constant standing but that also goes away rather quickly I noticed and for me it helps to focus on putting the weight evenly onto the pedal because in the beginning I had mostly the most of my pressure point on the outside it also relieves a lot of the pain you might get yeah just relaxing helps out a ton like today we just did a 65 mile ride to a local lake here near Warsaw or 65 kilometer ride and I was on an EUC the whole time my foot was cramping up a little bit, but I just focused on wiggling my toes, um, sliding my feet in a different position because you don't have to stay prone on an EUC. So you definitely are going to get sore. And it's the same thing that I hear from one wheel riders. Um, I used to only be able to do like maybe one to two miles on one wheel and feel really tired. But now I can do a 20 mile ride, no problem. You just get your, your foot muscles up and same thing with EUCs. Over time, you just start building up that muscle in your feet and it works out fine. Yes. And good shoes. Make sure to find good shoes that, that don't hurt your feet. Exactly. You need good shoes. And also, I've noticed the more of a heel I have. My boots have some small heel, like, I don't know, two centimeters little thing. 
And the more of that you have, the less you will feel the pedals, which might sound like a good relaxing thing, but you will have less control also then over your EOC due to that. 100%. Not only is this physical exercise, it's also good mental health exercising. And I've heard of lots of stories of people being addicts to alcohol, to drugs, and an EUC or scooter opened up their eyes to realize that there's more to live to life than just your nine to five. And it gave them a good mental health aspect to where they felt better about themselves, felt better about going into work. For me, my own experience going into the office and writing an EUC or scooter into work. I come in refreshed, relaxed, and I've got a big smile on my face. When I say to people, I have a smile so big that I can eat a banana sideways <laughs> when I ride one of those. Yeah, that sounds like a very great thing. And I have similar experience. Currently, I'm still studying at university and working from home. And what is great for me when I've been like sitting in front of my computer, working either on some things for work or for the university on my computer, after a long day, it feels very relaxing and freeing to step out onto the EUC and just see a bit of the world, get some fresh air and just ride very comfortably and just relax. It's a very relaxing thing mentally also. Like if I have a bit of a bad mood or something and then I go out for a ride, it always lifts the mood and makes me just feel more happy and positive. I couldn't agree more with your statement you just made there. And this also connects, I think, a lot to the ride feeling. Since you said you had the same or very similar experience on both a scooter and an EUC, which is just amazing that I think those type of vehicles can do something like that. I think that even though this is so similar, the ride feeling of both of the PVs are very different. Oh, completely different. It's A scooter is fun, but an EUC is an experience. And what I mean by experience is you're using your mind to control the whole thing. You're not using a throttle, you're not using handbrakes. It's all based off of your body's motion, how fluid you are with your body, and um, you and the wheel become one. We're in a scooter, or it's a blast, it's a ton of fun. I love e-scooters. There's no experience from an EUC that I can get from a scooter. EUC is really just an ultimate feeling of feeling free because your hands are free, your mind is free, you're controlling it with your mind technically, well technically your weight, but almost feels like you're controlling it with your mind. And um, it just is a, a whole outer body experience that I suggest if you love PEVs, you're doing yourself a disservice if you never try an EUC. Yes, that, that's very well said. And I can also agree with that, especially if you become a bit more experienced and a bit more sure in your riding on EUC. It does really feel like something very natural to do and feels like an extension to your own body to ride on it. And if you're unsure because you say, well, I've never ridden a scooter or I've never ridden a EUC, so you don't know which of those feelings you might prefer of riding if you want to have like an actual machine you control, or something that is more part of you. I would compare probably a scooter more to the bike that you have and control and you can control it quite easily, even you, though you don't have a throttle. When it comes to EUCs, I would probably say something like rollerblading or ice skating, since you don't have to put that much like strength into riding EUC than, for example, rollerblading, it still feels like an extension to your body. Yes, it's, it's definitely an extension to your body, the EUC. And I can see how rollerblading and ice skating are very similar. Like one-legged rollerblading, one-legged ice skating, they're very similar to riding an EUC one-legged where just locked in and just cruising along and in full control on one point of contact. Yes. So I don't know if I said that correctly, but... I think that makes sense. She smells what I'm stepping in. And um, yeah, it's, it goes like with an old adage that they say in the US, everything in life that's worth it is never easy. And that's kind of the same thing when it comes to EUCs. It is totally worth it, but it's not an easy experience to learn. But overall, a lot of people know me as the scooter guru, but if I had my choice, I would choose an EUC over a scooter every single day of the week. Wow, that's a very big thing coming from the scooter guru. And I very much appreciate all your thoughts and ideas you had and we could discuss here together. And also for me, the probably more obvious choice is also an EUC to choose an EUC. But I could also see many people taking a scooter for other reasons. 
maybe they're like not as fit anymore or they just like the type of ride they get. And so if you have your preferences, which you obviously do, let us know in the comments which is your pick and why. Yeah, and don't let me dissuade you from riding a scooter if you really have a passion for riding scooters. Scooters are a blast, but overall for me, just experiencing so many scooters and so many different EUCs over the past years, I just prefer an EUC because it's a totally different feeling and it feels like the same feelings that I get from snowboarding where I'm in complete control of everything. Where a scooter, you're in complete control, but it's just a different type of control. And I, I'm not sure if that really relays well. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think it does. Awesome. Okay, and with that being said, if you enjoyed this a bit longer video, give it a like, and if you feel really fancy, you might subscribe. See you next time. Take care. Scientific test. Scientific test is the scooter sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All those people here. Yeah, there you go. All these I people like, chose the UC over it. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah.